What's up, my good peoples? Welcome to the Be Transformed podcast, where we're talking about ideas that stimulate wholesome thinking into identity, purpose, vision, and action. I am James Anderson, and with me is Logan Eaton and potentially Carolyn Anderson. <laughs> but for now, Logan, what's happening? Nothing. <laughs> nice. Not I just got thing. here. You just got here. You look so fresh. Um, oh, tractor pulls are going on. Mm, the tractor pulls are going on. You may hear a tractor pulling something. Did you, did you guys did you take your kids over there? No. Watch anything? No. I don't I I don't think I even understand what's happening. Yeah, it's not really I like the I I would like the stock just the normal tractors and watch and just to see how far they can go. But when everything's all souped up, it's like, yeah, who just who went one centimeter further than the other guy? It's not, it's not entertaining to me, but so, is the load that they're pulling? Does it progressively get heavier, or have more? I don't even I don't even know. I think it's like how far you can go. So you're, you're measuring like the torque and the horsepower and all that. So it's like how far can you go before it before before it slips out? Before What's before you before like the, the torque is not enough to keep pulling the the sled. But doesn't it in momentum? Wouldn't you gain? traction uh yeah i don't know really how because i think it, maybe it's because it's under time time and load and all that that eventually you can only be under that much load for so long the engine can only be under that much load for so mm, long before until you, it explodes before you, but i do think that they yeah they might progressively happen. add as you go like add as you go down the track mm. like you get started and then they add weight i don't know mm. i could be totally wrong be totally wrong but after like two of them it's like okay <laughs> i feel like you feel like you've seen this before yeah. <laughs> it would be cool to see like just two old tractors tug of war tied together yeah out in the field or something and see <laughs> what happens <laughs> but this is too i don't know this is this is too organized here too or it's very organized this for people who don't know this is the national tractor pull yeah uh, whatever that means, and it goes down here in Bowling Green, Ohio, the claim to fame. Yep. Yep. You can see the cloud of puff of smoke go up in the sky. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. The roar of the engine, <laughs> and the announcer saying "full <laughs> pull." <laughs> you could do that professionally, I think. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't done that on a professional level? I I might have sent him a recording once, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and soccer. Go! <laughs> yeah, I think I wouldn't be good at that. At soccer? At announcing anything? Or announcing? You just get distracted too easily. Hmm. Yeah, long, soccer, churros, long, yeah, peanuts. And long moments of silence throughout the game. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on. No. <laughs> what game is this anyway? Is it halfway through the game? Is this thing on? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Hi. Right. So you guys are heading to Michigan tomorrow? We are. The Pardon beach. Me. Um, yeah, Lake Michigan, the beach oh, over yeah, by it. Michigan. Yeah, it's beautiful nice. out there. That'd be fun. Sandy beach, nice water, no sharks. That'd no be really fun. No salt. Oh, yeah, it's true. It looks like the ocean, though. It does look like, yeah, you can't see across it. Yeah. It's got some little waves. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be lovely. Great Lakes. Yeah, they're pretty great. Yeah, the one turns green every year. It changes color. Yeah. You know. It's with the thing. seasons. It's with the seasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's like spring. Maybe it'll turn it's red and green in the It's when the allergy Christmas blooms. Time. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone knows why yet. Why it turns green? Yeah could be a conspiracy why it grows algae too much cow patties 
Could be a conspiracy. Could be Bermuda Triangle <sighs> effects. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <the> <laughs> You don't know how long, how far those forces reach. <laughs> <laughs> and they get swept up by the prime meridian. Yeah. They go all across. There's the a world. lot of trade winds that <laughs> that could be pushing that those forces up here. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you could never know. But I think it is green. So if you're heading up to Lake Erie anytime soon, maybe, 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 just maybe. Don't eat your vegetables before you come. Yeah, maybe maybe it won't be green. Maybe it will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's my forecast. That is amazing. <laughs> I feel like you can really you know, put a lot of weight on that forecast. <laughs> <laughs> really make some good decisions Yeah, based upon that. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, it's the sound of the ocean now. <laughs> 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 Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. <laughs> We're talking about Lake Erie. Oh, Lake Erie. I did bring the ocean sound with me. You did. It well, changes colors. Lake Erie doesn't yeah. sound like the ocean, though, probably. It changes colors with the holidays, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we were talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to be caught up here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, tonight, I thought we'd talk a little bit about a little bit of shift in perspective Mm. yeah i was thinking about this verse this morning in psalm 100 i'm just going to read the whole thing because it's uh, pretty short but it goes a little bit like this it says shout with joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him singing with joy acknowledge that the lord is god He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. And I was thinking about this um, this one part that says enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise and I was just thinking about that because this morning like I was just kind of do a little reading and then I was just kind of had like this desire to hear from God you know get that little bit of strength in the guts happening there and, um, and I you know it's just interesting right I just think about sometimes praying and e- even just like that that real deep desire to hear from God. And some, sometimes that deep desire to hear from God can kind of come from a place of like doubt and worry, right? Like where you, where you really like, you're like, Oh, I could really use a little bit of like reaffirmation or something, you know? And, um, yeah. And that's just, it's just interesting because some, sometimes I think about that. Like when I get into that, that kind of perspective of like, man, I, you know, I could really use some affirmation. I could use like that, that, um, I don't know, just remind me I'm going in the right direction, right? I, I'm, I've been going, haven't been, you know, I'm not feeling anything and not hearing anything. It's everything's kind of a little bit challenging, but I'm like, doesn't matter. It's like, I know I keep showing up, but then sometimes you're like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you just, whatever. It's just like that, that there's just that constant awareness of like, I don't want to slip into doubt. But sometimes I just, I don't know, sometimes, you know, you you get into that, you can get into that perspective of like, like, oh man, I need to hear from you. And sometimes it it can, if you go too hard on your emotions, your perspective can get a little bit jacked up, right? And I was thinking about my kids in, in terms of perspective. And I was thinking about how sometimes like one of the kids will get hurt. And, and they'll get up and they'll like run circles, like screaming at the top of their lungs, right? They're just running around, "Ah!" you know, like screaming in pain. And it's just like, so that's their perspective. And then me, right. I'm like laughing because this is, it's like hilarious. It's like, why are you freaking out? (laughs) You know what I mean? And sometimes I think like sometimes, you know, our perspective can be like, you know, you're running around with your, your hair on fire. And, um, 
but like sometimes that's not but but in the, like just like in that picture right my kids were freaking out but i was like laughing because like they're panicking but there was nothing to panic about and sometimes you can get into this place of where like oh my gosh i got i got i got to hear from god and which is like yes but at the same point there's a difference between like faith and doubt you know and worry and fear versus like belief and trust and so sometimes that desire to hear from god can spin into that that worry fear doubt and um and so this morning and just kind of just as i'm like thinking about all these things and i'm even just like thinking about like my approach on like how i want to kind of you know how, how i even want to like approach god with like what i'm thinking and feeling obviously he knows everything I'm thinking and feeling, but at the same point, like I'm aware of how I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. And so sometimes I'll like consider, like I'll think about like, do I need to run around with my hair? Like my hair is on fire, you know, or, but then it's like, I think about this verse and this verse, like enter his courts with things, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And I was just thinking how like, you know, he's like set your perspective straight right? Like see God correctly. Take, take the focus off of the doubt and put it back on like how God is trustworthy. I mean the, the whole Psalm, right? He's, he's just talking about shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth, worship him with gladness, come before him with singing, right? Because he's God. We're his people, you know, we're the sheep of his pastures. His his unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So it's like you focus on this abundance and this grace and this the power and the the goodness, right? Th- this is where it's like enter his, his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And I was just thinking about how that, you know, the difference of perspectives of one where you're like you kind of freak out and worry and doubt. Or it's like you have you like you're standing at the edge of jumping into the, into full Fred's. I got to cry out to God. And, you know, like you, you could find yourself at the edge of wanting to jump into that. But I think like maturity, maturity is proved when it's like you're at the edge and then you, you choose to remember and you choose to think about who God is and who you are and what he said and, you know, because just just because you have these thoughts of doubt doesn't mean that God has those thoughts of doubt. Just because you're kind of have a perspective of like worry and fear doesn't mean like it's not a reflection of God's perspective. And so it's like if, if, if you can recognize that your perspective is different than God's then we can adjust our perspective to his. Right. And then you actually step back into reality, which is like kind of like what Psalm 100 is talking about. What do you guys think about any of that? Do you want to go? <laughs> I can go. I I think the first thing that kept coming to my mind was just that shift of perspective. You know, one, emotions don't dictate the truth. So when you feel like when you it's that panicky emotion, yeah. If you can remember the truth, that you know, that's that whole like you don't have to run around like your hair's on fire because if you actually can shift your perspective and then that reminds me of the microscope effect where you're zoomed all the way in and it feels like your problem is huge but if you just like look up it's like oh maybe it's not not so huge so that's that's what was coming to my mind when when you kind of think about god and as he's looking at us and his perspective on where we're going and what we're doing it's just all all along the journey you know you might hit a, a moment that feels like a mountain but it's really just like a little pebble (laughs) so yeah those are the thoughts that were coming to my mind yeah yeah i was thinking uh when you said like hearing from god it's just just the the thought popped in and 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 maybe this is weird but like hearing is only like one of the eight senses that you've got or or five how many senses do you have five six i don't think it's there's a movie called the sixth one so you have knees elbows (laughs) earlobes (laughs) well the movie the sixth one is i think the ability to fly and i think uh, (laughs) (laughs) 
there's at least there's a, there's at least five. At least, yeah. There's at least five senses. <laughs> but <laughs> that did, that was not what came into my mind. Oh, okay, mind. okay. Um, that just came into my mind. But <laughs> <laughs> if, there, if there's uh, if there's five senses, like like you know, like maybe we put too much emphasis on hearing from God. It's like mm. you can see God in in your in in uh, um, the day or whatever or in the process, like. It talks, the Bible talks about seeing God in nature, and I think you can just see God in a lot of stuff. But because we're sensitive people, we're always you know consumed by whatever the external environment's feeding us, and we kind of miss that. Um, so you can you can smell stuff and taste stuff, and um, what's the other one? Touch. Touch stuff and mm. and just experience God and just so I think I don't know that, that's what popped into my head was like why are we why are we so focused on hearing from God? It's like there's there's things you can. There's things that there's other ways to hear from God, mm. I guess. And I guess what the second thought that came to my mind was like, well, how does that happen? To me, I guess it's just in my experience, and, and this is just my opinion, is like you start, you know, counting the cost of where you want to go and making decisions and, and moving in a direction. And then those things start to, you start hearing things or seeing things or tasting things or whatever the other ones were. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but those things start yeah, to happen. Like you start 12. to, like if you just start taking little steps towards something, it, you know, um, um, anything. I mean, I, I, like we, we talk about self-development. So if you want to become somebody, it doesn't have to have, this, it doesn't have to be this huge dream that you have, but it just might be becoming somebody that's self-aware and, and, and just um, wants to be a better person or, um, you know, whatever it is, or maybe it's school stuff or, or work stuff or business stuff or whatever. But um, like when you start when you start using discretion to make decisions and then you start acting on whatever those decisions are, I think then you start to like see and hear and, and touch and smell and um, taste and all, and all that. So I, I think it's just like, man, we always talk about hearing and hearing and hearing, but it's like. I think I need to do a better job of this too. Is like, well, there's four other senses that you can, you know, experience God in, and uh, and don't limit yourself to just hearing. And to do that, I think you have to be kind of like conscious of where you want to go, using discretion to make decisions, and then having the confidence to make a decision to then have all that have those those. Uh, um, I don't I don't know if I want to even call them experiences because it's uh, putting a label like an experience. It's almost like you. You're waiting for an experience at that at that point, like and you and it, you don't feel a certain way, and you don't know if it came or not. But it, it's like you when you start moving in those directions, it's like those things are inevitable. It's just, at least that's in that's in I guess that's how I've kind of experienced it, for lack of a better term of experience. <laughs> <laughs> but looking back, There's I can see like you know when you make decisions, it's like oh I met this person and and we, um, you know this person you know we needed to meet at this time so that you know we could help each other at this and, and we might have had some great times together some great meals together so we told some great stories and had good laughs and it's all the senses being combined into being in that moment of time um, and experiencing God and or maybe I was at this place and it was like that place you know was was a place I needed to be and it was um, a, a place in nature and it was all that you know um the, the senses were picking that stuff up and experience and I was experiencing guys just stuff like that I guess um, I think that I don't know the, the, the past isn't really good for much except you know seeing how God's already worked and how he is working so I don't know that was what came into my head mm. 12 senses yeah no that didn't know that was that was all made up but <laughs> <laughs> there is at least five right <laughs> Five. At least five. Until they figure out how to thirteen. Until they figure out how to fly. <laughs> that, that would add another element there. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you said about seeing God because I do think that I I think it can you can get caught up in this like I need to hear an audible voice I need to hear this um, super clear answer but seeing is this is like you you can look around and look in circumstances and look in details of your life and just like see God's presence in your life yeah. like it's it's totally there so sometimes you could maybe get zeroed in on a problem and if you could you know get that fresh perspective and look outside of the problem then you might be able to see how God is already even working that problem out you yeah. just you know you maybe you're not hearing this voice yeah, yeah. when the environment dictates dictates the 
perspective, I think that's when things start getting skewed. When your external environment starts to dictate what your perspective is, then you can't like you can't see straight, almost, or you can't see clearly. Definitely can't feel straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So not letting your environment dictate your perspective, I think, is sure. Something I've had to learn and work on for sure. Mm. It's easy to do. Yeah. Well, and that's throwing throwing faith out out the window too. You know, if you if the if the boat starts to get yeah. <laughs> rocky, the waves are going, you know, if you are thinking about the your external environment, but yeah. you're forgetting about the faith and where you're headed and what you already know to be true. Yeah. But you're forgetting because of yeah, circumstances that might be happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean and one thing and this isn't like to hurt anybody's feelings or whatever, but it's just about the truth. <laughs> There's that concept where, where, you know, someone might say, oh, well, you just need to confess your, your, your need for God. And, and, you know, it just, I don't know, I heard it recently and it just didn't really make any sense. And we talked a little bit about it last week, but then I was just kind of even kind of applying it to this and just thinking it's like, all right, so in, in a time where you kind of get that doubt, you're like, ah, oh, I, I, I want to hear from God. and But it's like you want to hear from God, and not that's not bad, but it's like it's, it's motivated by, like, fear and worry and doubt. And so some people might say, well, you know, you know, you need to, I don't know, you need to surrender, <laughs> you need to confess your need or whatever. But it's like, and, and really in these times of doubt, like there's these these two like this couple verses that always just pop right in my mind whenever I'm starting to think of like oh man it's like I I need it'd be really nice to have like some like the the reaffirmation like as soon as I think that thought these verses pop in my mind and I think about when Peter stepped out on the water and he was walking and then he started to sink and Jesus's response was why would you doubt Right, like it wasn't like you need to confess your need for me. No, he says, "Why wouldn't you believe?" Like I said, come out here. Why wouldn't you believe me? Like why would you doubt? Like that doesn't make any sense. Like and and just that that perspective of like why would you doubt that when <laughs> when there's like that moment of doubt, it's like the it, it always comes back to f- that faith, and I always think, well, why would you doubt? I'm like, man. Because it's that same thing, you know, the the disciples were, you know, they were on the boat. Jesus was sleeping. The storm was raging. Everybody's freaking out, right? Running around with their hair on fire. Wakes up Jesus. Jesus is in his perspective, right? He wasn't laughing. He was sleeping. They were freaking out. He's just, <laughs> he's tired. Yeah, so he, he wakes up and he just quiets the storm. And he's just like, He's like, why are you so afraid? Like, do you still not have any faith? Jesus' response was, why are you so afraid? It's like in those times of doubt or worry or like, oh my gosh, am I going? Because like it starts just with that thought that, that just that little bit of like, well, because I haven't heard from him lately, does that mean I'm going in the wrong direction? Like, is that a sign? So that one thought like takes you off, your emotions get connected with that, and then you just start that worry and that doubt and that fear and that's what wants to then you want to run through those gates with your hair on fire right like god how come you're not talking to me if you don't talk to me i can't do anything you know what i mean it's like just like you know know, just that that desperation but it's coming from the wrong perspective and like in that wrong perspective that's when jesus it's not that he's asleep but in that in that story it's like he's asleep he wakes up and he's like why are you guys freaking out do you still not have any faith it's like Jesus' response, people, you know, to your doubt, to your fear, to your worry, Jesus' response is, do you, do you not believe? Like, where's your faith? That's Jesus' response. It isn't like, hey, confess your great need. No, he says, where is your faith? That's the response to doubt, is where is your faith? Yeah, what do you guys think about that? Uh, yeah, I was thinking I had an interesting thought. I was thinking <laughs> like, uh, 
I thought it was interesting, but let me tell you about it. And oh, then we love see. we love your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just thinking, like, why do people say that? Like, why, why does that said so much? Because I've heard it a lot and all that stuff. But um, I just thought about that verse where it's like God was talking about sacrifice, and like in the Old Testament, sacrifice was like a repetitive thing that that people did. And I think like that that repetition could could have you know easily became something that was like that repetition of the sacrifice became something that they that people thought that was the way to solve the problem was like that as long as we do this all the time or as long as we say these things all the time that that'll solve the problem and so it's like it's almost like we like that that repetitive thing that doesn't take any accountability or responsibility to say to somebody or to believe yourself like confess your need to god and it's like if somebody confesses their, you know praise i you know i god i need you like that doesn't take any kind of accountability or responsibility to say it to somebody or to to say it to to actually do it confess your need for god and it's not like we don't need god that's that's obvious you know it's um it's obvious we wouldn't be in existence without god so we need that connection but it just doesn't take any accountability or responsibility to say that just like the the sacrifice in the old testament didn't really take much it was just like slaughter this animal and and you're, you'll be atoned. Um, so then, so then I was, I was kind of thinking like, well, well, what, what did God desire? And, and I kind of went back to that verse that says, God doesn't desire, you know, the sacrifice of, of these animals he desires. I don't know what it, what it goes on to say, but I think it was like, he desires no. <laughs> taking care of the widow and the, and the fatherless and he desires mercy and compassion mm. and, and perseverance and all those things take responsibility and accountability. It takes, it takes all that. So I think, like when you're talking about that and maybe this is just being a critic, but those things that like that, like you said, like you just need to confess your need for God. It's just like something that we can repeatedly say that doesn't take any responsibility or accountability to say, and then also do all that, you know, however many times we want to confess that need for God as if he doesn't know that. And as if, you know, we need to keep reminding ourselves of that, but it, 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 it uh, um, yeah, it just like faith will take, some accountability and responsibility, like being on the boat. Um, it, it, it wouldn't have been easy to, to, to stand still on, on the boat and just trust, but, uh, it, it, it takes some, um, uh, yeah, I, I always go back to that accountability and responsibility. Like you have to kind of be aware of what's going on and, uh, and trust and all that. And, um, yeah, I guess that's what came to my mind. I don't know. It kind of jumbled, but it's kind of jumbled you know, out, but word jumble. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about it doesn't take any accountability or responsibility because essentially you're you're in that confessing your need instead of actually solving the problem. You're just yeah, you know, like that's not faith. Like confessing that need for God is not really faith. Like God, the you know, like the verse says, like this, you know, God doesn't require the sacrifice, but you can replace sacrifice with any kind of repetitive, empty, you know, saying or 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 whatever. Um, that's you're just trying to feel better about, you know saying something or saying something to somebody or saying something about yourself. But, um, he requires like the things that take, uh, he, he desires the things that, that, that take accountability and responsibility and, um, like, like taking care of the widow or defending the fatherless or showing mercy and compassion and all those things. And so, yeah, I, I just think, uh, yeah. Why, why, why is there a need to confess something that should, you know, it's already true. It's already, it's already there and it's already taken care of. And, um, yeah, I just think there's a lot of, yeah, there's a faith requires some accountability and responsibility when you're on the boat and it's sinking <laughs> or the, the waves are going, you know, crazy. It, it, uh, it's not easy, you know, um, you think it's sinking. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's what I thought. That's like that Robin Hood men in tights when Robin Hood fights little John in the in the creek. And uh, you guys don't know what I'm talking about? I don't know yeah. that one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> magazine? Uh, exactly. Um, anyways, so Robin Hood's fighting little John with these, you know, their sticks, staffs, whatever you want to call them. Bow staffs. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Robin knocks down little john and little john's like in the laying down in the water and he's freaking out because he's like i can't swim i can't swim and then like robin 
but in this one this is more of a the joke version of Robin Hood. I'm pretty it's like literally like a puddle. And so he stands up and then he's okay. But right from his perspective, he was like freaking out. He's like, I can't swim. But it's like the water oh, was man. so shallow you could just stand up and be fine. Yeah. But like from that perspective came a certain approach. But when your when your perspective gets adjusted, then you it affects your approach. And it's just like I consider my approach. Because I don't know. I mean, you know, if, if you've ever like gotten like mad at something or someone and then come to find out you didn't have all the information. And then when you learned all the information, you realize like you were mad at somebody and they didn't even do anything wrong. You know, it's like when, like if you've ever just been wrong, if you're like, no, mm-hmm. this is how it was. And then you're like, oh, crap, that's not how it was at all. Mm-hmm. Right. From your perspective. Right. So it's like. When I can, when I literally consider my approach, like I'm like awareness creates options, right? When you're aware of how you're thinking and how you're feeling, it creates options to choose which approach to take. Like, how am I going to respond? Am am I going to freak out? Am I going to hang out in fear and worry? Am am I going to, am I going to talk from a place of fear and worry? Or am I going to, going to tap into this? this Thanksgiving and praise and remember who God is. And I'm going to tap back into the correct perspective of reality and get out of kind of like my imagination. That's been working with my emotions in that fear and doubt and get kind of back into that, um, that correct perspective. Cause that's a real thing where, you know, you find yourself going off into weird perspective, but you can get yourself back. And it's like, every time you can recognize where you are, Dude, that's huge. It's a victory because you have the ability to choose. I don't know. You like even today, there's just like a ton of things going on. And it's like it's easy to get, you know, there's like this the again, it's like you're just kind of at like the the cliff where it's like you could jump off and just go straight, like light your own hair on fire. It's like you get so frustrated. Kids are being loud. There's these decisions, this decision, there's this in the back of your mind, this over here. And there's just all these things in your mind. I'm just thinking there's the, there's, there is a desire to freak out. And at the same time, this is all just happening in my mind. I'm, 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 there's a desire to freak out. But then at the same time, I'm like, I have the ability to handle all this, right? I, I have the ability to stay calm. Those, those things that are bothering me don't actually have to bother me. That's just like my perspective in the moment. And it's like, as I'm considering all this, I'm choosing the way I want to act. I'm choosing the way, you know, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to feel. I'm, I'm affecting my insides. And then by positively affecting my insides, I'm going to positively affect the outsides. But it's just all about your perspective and like gaining control of your perspective, man. It's huge because we're talking about self-discipline now. Self-control, I mean, right? Which is one of the realities, the byproduct of life inside of God. You know, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. But fruits are a byproduct. They're not just, they don't just happen. It's, they're qualities that are developed. And it's the fruit. It's, it's the byproduct of the actual work of like growing in knowledge and applying that knowledge, right? It, it's, it's the fruit of maturity, because all these things like in the that are these fruits, man, are all have to do with stability and choice, being kind, being faithful, being gentle, right? Being loving. All these things are like these are these are things you have to choose like on purpose. But yeah, growing in self-control, right? This is huge. But th- this is where like we we start dropping these things these incorrect ideas that really keep us from maturing and we start grabbing hold of the truth and faith. So when you find yourself in a little bit of doubt, you don't have to worry. You're like, Oh, I recognize that doubt. And now I'm thinking about why would you doubt, right? That's like your ability to then start retraining the way you think and start living from faith instead of, fear 
So it's not a big deal that you found yourself there. It's actually wonderful because now you can choose. You have the option to choose. You're not just stuck in doubt anymore. You're not stuck with the perspective of fear. You now have a choice to choose your perspective. Maybe you got the inclining to jump on the freak out wagon, but it's like, but I could also jump in the thankful wagon, right? And you get to now choose it's like a choose your end destination, choose your ending kind of book. You know what I'm saying? What Ever. kind of book? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the one that talks about the 20 senses. <laughs> <laughs> choose, your, choose an ending? Yeah, choose your own ending. Does it give you options? It must. <laughs> but so yeah, there's... there. <laughs> no. It's a made up book. <laughs> Does it just leave it blank and just you make it up? Or you write it in or... I don't know. There's those books, choose your own endings. Hmm. Or, or there's those movies that leave it up to you to decide what happened oh you know, they leave it up open. that's not worth a dollar family video <laughs> 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 <don't know> <laughs> but yeah it's that whole concept of, of cultivating a thought you know it's like you could choose to look at the waves and think about yeah. all that you can't do or you could look at jesus who's sleeping peacefully <laughs> resting which, by the way, pretty sure it's National Relaxation Day or Rest Day, according to Tropical Smoothie. What? Yeah, we missed out missed on that. It. Did we you get it. a Tropical Smoothie? I didn't, but I should have. We'll have to make up for that another day. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, just the concept of being able to look at what, you know, Jesus is just resting. And he's like, why do you doubt? They're looking at the waves thinking there's no way out as opposed to, all the miracles they've already seen Jesus do, you know, he's like, why, you know, you just command the waves <laughs> to stop. Yeah. Yeah. So is that the cultivating the thoughts of maybe what you can't do or where you're stuck or cultivating the thoughts of the problem instead of starting to cultivate the thoughts of the solution? Cause you shift that perspective. You start to mm. see, to look at who God is, what he's already done, what he, what he can do, you know, looking back at, what history has already shown you in your own life and other people's lives, you know, and then cultivating those thoughts. So it's that awareness and then choosing to cultivate, you know, the solution, not the problem. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's important. It's like you can, I think it, it goes back to this concept of uh, like self-discipline and even self-control, but self-discipline or self-control, right? It's self-imposed regulation. And the fun thing about like self-discipline is that I wish I had a phone that wasn't dead, but, um, yeah, look up, look up self-discipline, but it's like, it's, it's, it's the ability to like hold a course or continue in a course of action, regardless of the temptation to like do something else. Like you stay focused and you stay diligent in the midst of wanting to do like feeling like doing something else, right? That, that difference between like, I really want to do this. Like I would like to have that done, but I feel like doing nothing. I, I want to read that book, but I feel like watching the show. I want this, but I feel like. Yeah. You want to hear it? this? Yeah, go ahead. The ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses. The ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. Like literally, like you're tempted. If you're tempted, that means it's like you see a path to hop off the ship and like you kind of want to do it. But the self-discipline is your ability to stay on track even though you're like, oh my, that's kind of nice over there. Yeah. But like it's, it's your then... It's like you were talking about, Carolyn, it's taking that focus off that temptation or that fear or that whatever and getting it back on uh, truth and reality and vision and purpose. But like the the idea that um, I've been cultivating with um, self-discipline is just like it's OK that you feel like doing something else. It's OK like when you don't feel like it and you show up anyway, like it's okay to show up even though you don't feel like it. I'm not talking about like it's okay to show up with a bad attitude. I just mean it's like, man, I kind of would rather do this. I, I do want, I want to read, 
but I would rather I would rather like <laughs> zone out. And then you read. Like it, it's it's okay that it's hard. Like because sometimes it can feel like Am I, am I wrong? Is there something wrong with me because it's so hard? Is there, is there, yeah, like you, you could start getting into like fear, doubt, and worry because it's like, this isn't easy. Or it's like, because it's not easy, maybe that's not the way you should go. But no, self-discipline is actually, you, you know, you're in it when you feel like doing something else, but you're doing the very thing you committed to. You're doing to the very thing that you actually want. Cause like, man, we actually freaking want to grow in maturity. We want to take massive amounts of action. We want to create these beautiful things. We want to turn these ideas into realities. We want to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth. But it's like, we feel like just doing what we've always done. We feel like doing the normal thing, even though we want to do these other things, we still just kind of feel like, hanging out in our old habits. But it's like the thing about self-discipline is like, it's okay to start to get into the things you actually want, even when you don't feel like it. Like you're not wrong when you feel like doing something else, but you show up anyway. It's like, there's something wonderful in the, in the, in the fact that it's okay that you feel <laughs> like you show up anyway, you don't want to do it, but you show up and then you keep showing up. Cause that's, those are the people that get labeled successful. There's the people who keep showing up when they don't feel like it, who train themselves to keep showing up regardless of what they feel like. But that's the same thing with perspectives. If you find yourself wanting to run in a bad perspective, you don't have to, though. Like, you're not enslaved to that habit. Maybe you're used to going down that path of fear, worry, anxiety, Maybe, you know, like, you're like, man, I'd really like to worry about this for a good hour, you know, <laughs> really picture all the worst case scenarios, all the terrible things that could happen to my kids and my life, and my family and my house blowing up <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or <laughs> it's pretty extreme. Yeah. You could use your 16th sense <laughs> and get, get, get into hope and faith and trust, right? Like, no, man, here's where we're going. Here's what we're doing. And you just shift your focus and shift your your perspective because when you do that then you shift your whole approach to life so you got to choose that focus choose that perspective enter those courts with thanksgiving what the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise <laughs> right on purpose so, yeah yeah, yeah go i just think about being thankful you know that is a that is that whole perspective thing you could you can choose yeah. what you're focusing on there will always be something to complain about. <laughs> there will be, you know, if you're focusing on that, if you're looking for the lack, but if you're looking for what you have and you, you know, you think about thankfulness, it's like sometimes you have to shift that perspective and, and really, sometimes you got to look for it. Other times it feels more obvious, but just having that perspective of thankfulness instead of grumbling. Yeah. I think getting to the point of like, I'm going to enjoy the process, even if it, drives me insane yeah i'm gonna enjoy the the process like i, I don't know there's a lot of trying to put it into words but like being on the ship during the waves it's like forcing yourself to be like oh this is a really this is gonna be a really fun <laughs> boat ride <laughs> <laughs> just having like just this this is unwaver this unwavering trust it's like yeah i'm just gonna enjoy it regardless of of all this stuff and yeah just choosing to enjoy it um, because then you don't want to get to where you where you set out to go to and look back and be like, wow, I handled that really poorly. Yeah, <laughs> I handled that whole process really bad. And I wasted a lot of time, a lot of days worrying about stuff that like eventually worked out. Yeah. And so, yeah, just choosing joy. I think that's that's one of my biggest things I'm trying to do right now. Is just choose to choose to enjoy the process, mm. even if it like doesn't make sense <laughs> and, and it, it almost drives you insane. But um, <laughs> just, yeah, choosing to enjoy because you don't want to waste that time. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you can waste a whole lot of time circling around yeah. <laughs> some problem or yeah. just today talking about some yeah. y house project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, waste in, waste in perspective here when you know you just <laughs> jump out of that circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, choosing, that was a silly example, but choosing to focus on the right thing and not waste your time focusing yeah. on the wrong. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's only so many hours in a day. And yeah, you just hate to look back over the day or the week or the month and just be like, man, 90% of that was just me worrying about stuff that eventually 
got worked out. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, that's where it's like when you start when you start taking account of that and you start like basing your decisions off your experience, right? Where you start to see the patterns of like, all right, well, I worried about this, but then it, it I worked it out, like I figured it out, or it it just it it was it it was a process that was going to take time, and me worrying the whole time in that process didn't actually accomplish anything. Right. And so it's like, if you can see that, then you can see the next time. Well, it's like, all right, well, this doesn't make any sense to worry about it. So you just, you know, I mean, yeah. you work then, you, then the goal is to work on just like letting it go, not focusing on that, not putting your energy there, or your imagination or emotions. Yeah. But yeah, I was listening to uh, Grant Cardone today in a book called Seller Be Sold. And he's just talking about, he's like, be the most positive person in the room. Like be the most positive person in the room. It's like, those are the people that, that kind of mentality. Those are the people that kind of see opportunities and take them right. When when you're constantly pessimistic and just like, Ooh, like everything's hard. This is too much work. I'm too tired. Right. I mean, you're just going to kind of like, you're going to see the, you're going to see the potential and you're going to see the opportunity and you're going to turn it down on purpose because your mindset sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And somebody else, I was listening to something and it went to the tune of, what was that movie we were watching last night? <laughs> he said, and he was even just talking about like a weekend. He's like, you know, when something ends and something begins, like when something ends, then something new begins. And I was just even thinking about it like day to day. Right. Cause it's like, even with a job, maybe you don't want to do, or like something you got to do the next day. It's like, no, this is still like the other yesterday ended like, and this new day began. Like, I don't need to walk around downcasted in this brand new day that holds full of potential, right? But your your perspective could be so focused on the thing you don't want to do that you totally forget about all the things that you do want to do. Yeah, for sure. So perspective, man, it matters. That perspective shift. It's huge. Yeah. And when you start, when you start deliberately choosing your perspective, oh my gosh, you just, you just became in control of your life. When you choose how you're going to think and how you're going to feel, and then you, then you like flesh that out, even in the midst of a temptation to like light your hair on fire and scream and run around in circles, you got, there's that temptation. But when you consider it, you're like, well. That's an option. That doesn't take any accountability or responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know that eventually you're just going to get over it. You're going to put your hair out. You're going to take a couple deep breaths. You're going to get over it. So if you're going to get over it anyway, then it's not even worth it. Yeah. Like forego, keep your hair, take a deep breath now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean yeah. like break the cycle of like the bad perspective and continue to jam in the correct perspective. But yeah. Yep. I was just thinking about this as just as a whatever. I was just thinking about this thought. I was just like, God is interested in doing something. You know, I, sometimes I'll get caught. Uh, there's this idea where it's like, I don't know. Like you think about David, you think about Joseph, these guys, right? David was anointed king, but then he wasn't king for like years. Joseph had a dream to be, you know, essentially a higher up. And that junk didn't happen for years. Right. So sometimes I think about that process of time and it's like, uh, you know, just in terms of like taking action versus, Oh no, you got to wait. Cause it got to, everything's got to take time. But then I was just thinking, I was like, man, God's like ready to do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, he's like ready for somebody to be like, dude, I'll do it. And then do it. Like God's ready. It's just in that perspective, right? God's ready to use you. God's ready for you. Let's let's say this in a different way. God's ready for you to grab hold of the things that he's been talking to you about through these things you've been thinking about and dreaming about and yearning about. Like God's ready to get into these things. Like cultivate that kind of perspective. Like the great change is about to take place. 
jump into it. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, somebody. My good peoples, until next time, keep it real.